Well, my recent uh, Hamfest find of this uh, Tektronix uh, 1401 Spectrum Analyzer module is just a, kind of a fun little box. And as I may have mentioned in the previous video, the um, interesting thing about this module is it was available, or it was typically sold along with a, uh, a little 323 uh, battery powered oscilloscope that was virtually the same physical size in terms of dimensions and the, the handles linked together. And the nice thing is both of these things were battery operated and it made it really popular with people doing surveillance uh, and looking for bugs and doing all kinds of uh, you know RF surveillance and things because it let, let, let you get out in the field and make measurements without having to be plugged in somewhere. So it was kind of neat. It has a really neat little feature that I haven't seen on modern spectrum analyzers which I thought was pretty cool. Um, you know, part of the problem with some of these older analyzers like this is that you know when you put them onto the scope you know, nothing was really annotated. So if you're looking for a signal what would you do? So this had a really neat, what well, they call it a search feature. And if you look at the uh, frequency span uh, control here, and if I adjusted that all the way down to the bottom one, uh, which is 50, um, excuse me, 50 megahertz per division, they also called it a search mode. Okay, And what that did, I'm going to switch it back up to one click here, or two clicks before that, and look at the, the spectrum analyzer display. Okay, if we look at the analyzer display here, okay, so that's at the... 10 megahertz per division. I don't see a signal here. All right, so let me turn the intensity down a little bright here. There we go. I don't see any signal on here. I've got a signal going in, but I don't see it. So um, a lot of times, what you might do is, you know, if we go all the way over to that search mode, you'll notice I see a, you know, a couple of signals here, and you'll notice that little notch section down at the bottom. That's actually kind of what, what they called the kind of the search marker. All right, and the way that worked um, is, is it allows you to essentially adjust the center frequency control here which is also called the search marker and a real good way to make that stand out quite a bit if I pull back here and watch if I switch the video bandwidth filter let me switch the video bandwidth filter on and you'll see that kind of eliminates a lot of the noise from the video output so I get this little notch okay and if we kind of pull this guy up here you know, let's kind of pull back a little bit if I adjust you can kind of see that notch on the display if I adjust the center frequency you may notice that that notch is now moving back and forth. So what the guys out in the field will be able to do is if they saw a number of signals on the display, they might say, well, yeah, there's a signal, say, over here, there's another one over here, over here. I want to go see what they are. What I would do is by adjusting you know, the knob here, I can adjust over to be centered up on that particular signal, say, right there. And then I could look here and say, okay, that's right around 149, 150 megahertz. And then by taking my span control and zooming in, okay, let's uh, grab the right knob here, and now I can really zoom in on that particular signal, go finer and finer in terms of fewer megahertz per division, and get a finer look at that signal. I can adjust the resolution bandwidth down and maybe look at it a finer result of that. So that kind of search marker along with, and the video filter certainly helps too, right? The search marker and the, uh, the video filter are really helpful to kind of, let's see, get this thing to focus here again. There we go. Put the video filter on, see how it gets rid of all the noise. Okay. So between those two things, um, made it really easy to kind of go and pick out signals. Just kind of a unique thing that uh, um, you know that it was kind of a you know, predecessor to some of the more modern uh, spectrum analyzers that actually had marker controls that you could put on the display. So before we had that, in terms of figure out where you were in frequency, that little uh, that little search marker notch, if you will. I thought it was a pretty unique feature that, uh, like I said, I haven't seen typically on, uh, on other analyzers. Just kind of a unique thing. I thought it was pretty cool to do a quick little video on. But anyway, uh, just fun stuff from, uh, from the mid-70s. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed.